Since the recession of 2008, we've seen unprecedented government intervention in the financial sector and in the automotive industry. We've seen new spending programs, more tariffs and new regulations. And we've seen the largest buildup of government debt in American history. A debt that might haunt us for generations. Some people blame the financial crisis on Milton Friedman and his theories of free markets. But Friedman would say that economic freedom is not just to reap the rewards when times are good, it's also to bear the consequences of your actions when times are bad. We don't have free markets as long as speculators can keep the profits when they win, but send the losses to the taxpayers when they lose. I was born and raised in Sweden, and my country has made an effort to make people's lives more equal. To reduce differences of outcome, we tax heavily and redistribute wealth among our citizens. And many people in the United States advocate a system like ours. If, on the other hand, the government gives everybody the same freedom to work and reap the rewards, some will do better than others. The result will be equality of opportunity, but not equality of outcome. Here in the United States, you've accepted more inequality of outcome. And over the past 30 years, a debate has been raging between these two competing alternatives. Can we live with economic freedom, even though it doesn't guarantee a specific result? Even though it's built on the ongoing destruction of old ideas and businesses that are no longer competitive? Can we accept freedom, even though freedom to choose also means that we will not all be equally successful?